Hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite space bullshit adventure, Nebula Jazz. This is episode number five. I am joined by the cast, Dodger, Pocket, yes. Strip Van Winkle, oh. and my new best friend, Jesse Cox. <laughs> I haven't seen any of you except for my new best friend, Jesse Cox, in a really long time. It's been a while. It's been, like a, it's been like a month. I've seen Jesse twice in real life since Oh, my then. God. No, we are really magical. dropping the ball, friendship-wise. I know you could have been you could have been there for that, but no, you were in a different part of the country. I you orchestrated live in. one of those meetups. All right, that's so true. Don't come for me like that. <laughs> okay. I I led you two to each other. You were we... Yenta, the friend maker. Exactly. <laughs> can we exactly. can we talk about how handsome you look right now, Sam? Can we just can we just take a minute? That's a great that's a great shirt. Great shirt. <laughs> not yeah. Not only not only does that beard look fantastic, but you're Are matching you? your hat. Mm -hmm. And your shirt. Yeah. Look at you like dressing like a grown up with you your matching get color. More attractive every day or just every so often? <laughs> you are a charmer, you. How did this happen? What? Anyone who's telling you flip? what happened? Here. Anyone who's telling you that you need to you need to shave your beard, they're lying yeah, to you. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of uh, strippers on the Yeah, no. No. <laughs> ask ask Jeff. Ask ask our good friend in control what happens when you have a beard and then you shave it and what people think of your face thereafter. It's a hard <laughs> time. It's a real hard time. People are gonna be just as mean. Stick with it. Meaner. If anything, meaner. If anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a huge fan of the beard, so there you go. There you go. See it, it looks good in a wedding photo. Just put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so besides besides improving your face like seven hundred percent, what have you been up to? Sam, what have you been doing? Because the last time we talked, we were playing some game about Vikings or some shit. What are you, do, what are you doing now? Uh, that was for Anna. I just, I, I haven't been doing a lot. My, just, um, say, just say the my, name of that game again. Say again. What's the name Verona. of that game? Uh huh. And what kind of, what kind of fish live in the Amazon River? Uh, say that. It sounds like piranha. Piranha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, uh... That took me a minute. I was like. Yeah. I can't think oh, of we call delayed, delayed blast fire on that one. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. What have you been up to, please? My uh, my mother came to visit, so she she went home uh, yesterday, the day before, and she was here for a week. So, showing mother Thorn the delights of Los Angeles. I imagine, and you can you can help me you can help me reconfigure my my thoughts on this. But I imagine when I imagine your mom, uh, Sam, um, I imagine Queen? like. What is your mom like? Help me understand this, because I just think of like old British lady. Like I'm thinking about Queen Elizabeth when I think of your mom. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Jessie. Not that. Not no? that at all. No. What if think we just? Like, she's she's like, she's got like a very childish side to her, but also, she's like a woman where there's like five, six foot four men, and they all fear her greatly. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Think like sassy Cockney lady. Don't think highbrow queen. Think like right. she she's ready to throw down. <laughs> like the lady equivalent of like Guy Ritchie or something. I all believe right. the queen's ready to throw down at all times. I don't know. She's, she's ready to fall down, not throw down. <laughs> are you, Jesse, I don't are you know. Serious? All of her queen. outfits ancient. match perfectly, much like yours. So there might she's be a little connection there. And decrepit. What I'm saying is I'm very attracted to the queen. I have a thing. I have a thing for her majesty. <laughs> Beautiful woman. I've personally never seen her majesty, but I hear Bailed it's quite hips nice. and all. <laughs> uh, Well, speaking of women that Jesse has a crush on, um, let's talk about Aloy, Jesse. How great is Aloy? Aloy? Uh, I love her tremendously. She and I... Uh, literally, you're playing the Egret Simulator... 2017 yeah. and I don't care. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Um yeah, that's really They're all I have to say. Talking about her. Horizon for anybody yes. who's watching that's like what the what? <laughs> she's a character. She's the main character from Horizon Zero Dawn. She's also yeah. the best. Imagine Chloe from Life is Strange no, became don't, don't. much more likable and don't then shot people that. with arrows. They're in different stratospheres. Don't even <laughs> compare them. What are you yeah, doing? I'm, saying, I'm saying, imagine she became likable and then kill people. That <laughs> is that is who Aloy is. And I just, mwah. Yeah. Love yeah. the death. Aloy is yeah. a queen. You can't compare them. 
Besides, yeah, besides being super cute. Um, I'm not. I'm saying that... one's way better than the other, Sam. I'm <laughs> saying one is way up here and the other's way down here. <laughs> They're just related by the fact that someone else voices them together. If the if the apocalypse causes everyone in the world to suddenly become way more cute, I personally welcome the end of the world. <laughs> like, can we just get those robot dinosaurs in here? Just, just fuck me up. I would like to be in that world where everybody's I mean, super cute. It reminds me of Final Fantasy 15 where... Everyone in that world is like gorgeous, except for one guy. There's always the one goes like, "Hey, I got a meatball sub. If you guys want to share." It's like, how are you existing in this world? How do, you, how are you here? Everyone else is like the peak human specimen. This guy's like, "What's going on, fellas? I just came from the comic book convention over there. It's really great." And you're like. What are you doing in this game? It's the exact same thing. I'm waiting for that guy in Horizon Zero Dawn. He just shows up and he's like, hey, everyone. Hi. Are we fighting dinosaurs today? Okay, cool. I'll be over here. Human <laughs> human evolution is a complicated and beautiful process. Um, that's true. We just, you know, true. you got to give it. That, um, the person that voiced Aloy also did Chloe, though, from Life is Strange. That's right. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah! Hi, Pocket. Welcome to the hi, conversation. Pocket. Uh, hi, Pocket. I was Thanks for joining us. Fan the, the, the thing be <laughs> over with real quick, and now I'm saying, did you know? I looked that up yesterday, and I was like, wait, she did both. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There's my tidbit. I'm done. Goodbye. Thank you for sharing. We didn't know that. None of us knew that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so Pocket, little known fact, Pocket is, is streaming to us from deepest Mongolia. She's on a very long time delay. Uh, yeah. So. I was so that we could start the show, Pocket, can you go ahead right now and roll your roll your forceful? I'm gonna get to it in about an hour. You were off on a tangent, and I was like, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him finish. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna Kanye him right Don't now. Don't lie. Don't lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna Kanye West. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that, that, could, that couldn't have planned that better. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, Pocket, now that you have the stage, um, how, how, how have you been, besides oh, being an egg? I'm losing my voice. Yeah, I, I got uh, insulted and called um, an effing egg. That's that's like the insult of my lifetime right now. I love it. It's the best. It's a pretty common <laughs> insult in England, actually. Oh, is it really? Help, yeah. help us understand why that's... I mean, what is an egg? What does that mean? Just, you're, you're a fucking egg. It's just... <laughs> Like, All right. there's no reason for it. It's just somehow it became like a pretty popular insult. Wait, just to call a person an egg? Yeah, yeah. You're just like, a fucking egg. Just an egg. You're an egg. Yeah. But like, what does it mean? I'm just, kind of I'm just saying there's fragile. substance to it. You don't have to, I don't have a reason for it. It's just a thing. Easily punctured exoskeleton. I don't, right. full yeah. of goop. You Delicious. guys say jerk a lot. Jerk sounds crappy. Egg sounds better. Egg, I don't. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, okay, all right. I really don't know how many times I've said the word jerk lately. Yeah, I'm trying I to use think of ass. Last time I, I use a lot of words. Maybe third grade it was like jerk. Jerk, jerk is like jerk. Jerk. It's, jerk. It's a. It's the beginning of an insult, not the whole insult. Like jerk off, sure. Mm -hmm. Jerk ass, sure, maybe. But like, yeah, on its own, I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna bring jerk back. Is that a thing? I think it's Apparently more like the English thing we say a lot. So anyway, I butts. I don't. I don't know. That's like my biggest one. It's like I'll just call someone a butt. Ooh, but. that's a fun game. What's everybody's favorite thing to call people? Butt butts. <laughs> yours? Pocket <laughs> really? That's, oh, that's... I use the word. I've been starting to use the word wackaloon a lot. I don't know what it means, but I really enjoy it. <laughs> like you you're the reason that things like egg becomes insults. You're just like I don't know why, but this oh, is it. Oh. I've call got it. Calm it down, Wackaloon. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> See? It rolls up the tongue. It's borderline insulting. You don't know what it means. I guess, like, I could, you could pick that apart, right? You're a wacky loon. Yeah, you're, you're a wacky loon. loon. It's not offensive. It's just like, calm it down, Wackaloon. Yeah. See? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wackaloon. Wow. There you go. All right, everybody. You can take that to the bank. You got that. You got a new insult to add to your roster. <laughs> Next time someone cuts you off Excuse traffic. Me? Someone cuts you off in traffic, just like, you whack -a loon I had the right of way. And then they'll ride off on their velocity. Shake your cane <laughs> out your horseless carriage. Yeah. <laughs> Typical underclass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm trying to trying to figure out pocket. I'm trying to figure out what's going uh, on with you. Hey, uh, hey man, what, what, you know, tell I'm me, in the past. Me, so it's been five minutes. We're good. 
Yeah, how's Final Fantasy 15 in the past when people are still playing that? <laughs> no, that was Jesse. Uh -huh. I'm just um, picking an old game you might Mass be playing. Effect. No, I've been playing Mass Effect 2 and 3. I beat 2 and now I've, uh, I'm into 3. And um, they're good. It's good. It's a fun game. There's a lot of talking, which I expect. But there's a lot of like... I think that my biggest pet peeve about them is that sometimes they can word things in a lot less words. And they keep going anyway. And you're like, okay, I get it. Nope, I get it. Why are we still talking? keep rephrasing the same yeah. thing over and over again. <laughs> Pretty much. And it's like, yeah. no, I got it. I got, okay, space bar. <laughs> but the game itself is pretty fun. Um, I like the story or the, the characters a lot. But I, so, I mostly was doing it to build up to the new game. Asking the question that everybody wants to know. Uh, oh. Who you banging? Oh, Garrus. Yeah? Play Garrus. He's are you dozen. are you which and which which shepherd are you? Correct shepherd or cardboard box shepherd? Them Shep. Yeah, of course you are. Good good oh. place. <laughs> cardboard box. <laughs> Seriously, he's he's a wet cardboard box that they just wheel around the game with a face yeah. drawn on. I was talking good about choice. this uh, on Saturday morning Duger, but apparently like the animations in in the new one are kind of this isn't a spoiler for people. We're talking about animations. But apparently the animations in it are kind of jank. I heard that. In the new one. That's what I hear. To be fair, they're not really the best in the older ones either. <laughs> not cool. Very great. good. I don't know. Really, they're just keeping to the it, norm. You run like you have the wedgie of a lifetime as Femship. And I'm just like, what is this run? Oh my gosh, can I zoom in? Like, I mean, you, I... Ever, you ever wondered why she's got that bad attitude no matter what you do? It's because <laughs> her fucking space ginch are just wedged up there in the Grand Canyon. Um... <laughs> I have heard that though, and I think I think that we're facing a Fallout 4 like Witcher situation where you know games like Horizon, which are beautiful artistic works of genius, versus uh, like Mass Effect, and they're they're coming out at the same time, and we're looking at these games kind of side by side. I mean, like, eh. like right, right. now, Horizon Come comes out and it's beautiful, and the animations are beautiful, and then you go play like you know, or you see Andromeda, and you're just like, what? What happened well, to the animations, at least? Horizon's my game of the year, but even Horizon had, like, some pretty bad... You know, it's March, thinking. right? That it, It's only March now, and this is that's a preemptive call to make. Uh, no, I'm making it. All right. <laughs> really? <laughs> Until, unless fucking Aloy comes back in Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Okay, <laughs> right, I'm pretty skin. sure. He's playing the animation right now. Yeah, I'm saying, like, you know, no game's perfect, but, yeah, people are really picking holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I, Wait, I actually that I, running animation is fucking awful. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, when you like run up and down stairs, and then you get stuck in the stair animation, what? and you like squat it looks around. like you have a like. Ooh, get it out of there! Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here. Man, that, that guy runs like a wackaloon. I tell you. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, I could watch that all day. Yeah, the show's canceled. We're just going to sit here and criticize <laughs> yeah, that clip forever. A little waddling, a little waddling shepherd. So you're just getting into three uh, now, Pocket. That's yeah, what you're saying. I'm to three. And uh, I'm going to try and rush through it, which is not really possible. But you're going gonna... to do this. You're going to do the Citadel DLC? Um, I don't know yet. I might, because the, the thing is, you can play the new game without finishing any of the older games, really. I mean, you get. I'm sure you're going to get like tiebacks, but it's not going to be like. You 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 can't import your anything from your other games anyway. So um, yeah. I was enjoying two, and I maybe cried a little at the end, but now I want to get oh. into three. And immediately realized, wow, three like two was dark, and three just starts off like insanely dark, and I really like that. Dodger, are you laughing at? <laughs> Looking at all of this. <laughs> uh, Dodger's got a really good disgusted laugh face. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would suggest if you're playing three, I really like the Citadel DLC. Um, I think if you get attached to the characters, it does some cool stuff that like lets you see some things about the characters that are um, uh, obfuscated in the main game that don't really give you the option to to like see them. Um, it's pretty fun. I quite like it. Um, but yeah, three is three is interesting. Well, we should we should talk about it again when you're finished because it's it's divisive. I think next week, right? <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Cool. You got a week. Go for it. Finish finish that game. I guess if you're run, uh, rushing through it, that'll be fine. Yeah. Um, are you are you composed enough for me to talk to you, Dodger? Are you okay? Yeah. Can you get, you know, <laughs> yeah. I want to give you a minute. Funny, funny stuff. Hi. How you been? I've been great. Yeah. Um, like Sam said, his mom was in town. We got to finally go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. 
and that was great. Heads up for everybody, because I know so many people have been like, I really want to go because I want to do the wand experience where you like go in and they, you know, I paid somebody like... for the wand experience once. It was not worth it. <laughs> Just saying, save um, your 20 bucks. The the way that they do it is they bring in like a huge group of people and one person gets to do the wand experience for everybody else. So keep what that is, in mind. What is the wand experience in this context? The wand experience is like you go in. No, you think. The way, that, the way that everybody thinks it is, is like you go in by yourself and then there's an actress there who's like the person running the wand shop, right? And they uh, do a, a test for you and then they give you a wand and you flick it and things go awry in the room and you're like, oh no, that's not the wand, right? And then right. they give you your perfect wand and you glow. And, um, and then they charge you a hundred bucks. And then they charge you a lot of money for that wand because oh, hot damn, they are expensive. And then for some reason, the wand never does magic again. It's like it only happened in that room for some reason, but it's too late, you bought it. That's um, the problem, man. You don't, you don't, you get pay all this money for a wand that only works once. That's a shame. And your magic isn't real also, heartbreaking. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> So just don't just don't good, go. The butter beer is so good though. The butter beer is incredible. Um, I sent your mom. Sam's mom was like, "I need to figure out how to fucking make this back in England. Like, I I need to figure it out." And uh, we found a how to that she's gonna try. She claims she's gonna try it today. So we'll find out whether or not it was. Is uh, it just a like butterscotch butter flavored like? What tell? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, at all it's about like Harry it's like it's like there's this shitty kid and he's a wizard. But I would do butter beer. Tell me about this. Explain. Um, the butter beer that you get at Wizarding World of Harry Potter <laughs> is like a butterscotch cream soda e tasting thing, and it was does, really hot outside, so they froze it. So it was like a slushy. It was fucking great. Does it get Small you fucked caramel up? flavor? No, there's no. Unlike in real harry potter I, I don't yeah i don't know how it works in jolly old england but where i'm from the purpose of beer is to get your ass drunk so <laughs> root beer doesn't i, I mean i was root fucking offended doesn't. that it was non-alcoholic you know you don't have to look yeah. at me like that england <laughs> all we do is drink we drink yeah, everything like is alcoholic 14. in england why do you think they like tea so much yeah okay all right so, yeah. i feel you so butterbeer good children can have butterbeer butterbeer butter beer good magic children can have regular beer too come on um, but magic, magic wand, bad butterbeer, good. Okay, cool. I can't, I can't imagine it'd be that hard to make. Uh, Sam's mom, Sam's mom, I believe in you. You can do it. I believe in Sam's mom as well. I I believe in her. I think she can do it. That's not my mom. <laughs> oh. It's really weird. Sam's mom is on the back of the twenty dollar bill in Canada. It's a strange. <laughs> She's a strangest beautiful thing. Beautiful lady. Beautiful, beautiful lady. Early hair. Where's that crown? I've been, watching this, I've been watching this show on Netflix about your mom, Sam, when she was a kid. It's great. Oh, Who boy. knew? She's a looker. My, uh, my mom, actually, her, like, uh, her uncle used to work for, like, um, fuck, the Cray Twins. And he was, like, a fucking, he was, like, axe murderer guy. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm whoa. telling you, full on Cockney. <laughs> Scrappers. That's Sam's whole family. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Well, you're related you know, to Zeke's character from Blades. Your, your train of thought was my uncle, who worked for the no, it's Twins, like it's like it's was like, an axe murderer. Like no, it's like, like... <laughs> right. So my, my uncle, uncle, he got an axe, be, right? <laughs> kill me with axes, you know, as you do. Yeah. You say yeah. that like you don't understand the the true power of a good reveal, Jesse. <laughs> no, yeah. no, if anything, I, I'm appreciating it much more. Killing I people really, is the second really most like popular it. thing anyone can do with an axe, so it only makes well, sense. Yeah. You run out of wood to chop. It's only one place to go. Only one place to go from there. Well, mm -hmm. I personally have a deep and abiding fear of the House of Thorn now, so stay the fuck away from me, man. I don't want to get axe murdered. You want to be on my good side. <laughs> Damn. Listen, Listen, we both know. Fucking oh, you will come pay you a visit, mate. So, let's let's recap because it's been fucking forever. It's been That's twelve. It, it's been so twelve sex since the last time we played. Um, so, in the previous four episodes of Nebula Jazz, uh, our our scrappy heroes uh, unearthed an artifact which we would come to know is the uh, Agarin Scepter of Ascension a uh, powerful uh, symbol of the uh, people of Agara, whose homeworld 
was devastated in a war with the current kind of overlords of the universe, uh, the Mingasi Imperium, who have recently lost their beloved prince uh, to a terrible, terrible murder by you four jerk-offs, uh, according, to, according to the universe. Yes, which we know. You didn't kill him. You only ate him after the fact. <laughs> You know, well, probably won't hold up in a court of space law, but we don't need to get into that just now. I feel fine, so you though, found, so. found this scepter, and in attempting to uh, in attempting to offload it, um, you got tangled up in this this plot. Uh, the the Duke uh, Duke Mako Astara has taken over regency of the Imperium and is now uh, dedicating at least some of his attention to hunting you down. Um, also, hunting you uh, was a uh, sexy young lady named Thuja Mayhem. Uh, former girlfriend of uh, Rex. Uh, and who, kind of current uh, girlfriend of Rex. Yeah, let's be real. Like, kind of current girlfriend? There's some complicated no. stuff going on no. there. Um, so she's been she's been hanging out with you of late and uh, did, though, recently uh, attempt to turn you over to her people uh, under the um, uh, instruction of her mysterious patron, uh, a woman who I believe you all suspect to be I think this is your your pet theory, Dodger. Who do you think this lady is? <clears throat> oh, uh, I I think that she's the the other. Fuck, I'm trying to I'm trying to like gather my thoughts now from a few episodes ago. Hey. That that she's the other, um, queen or princess that is associated with the prince who is killed. Yes, yeah, that there was a there's been we've seen photographs of her um and uh it was rumored that this this woman this uh this sort of um like weirdly human looking woman uh was uh, a liaison of the prince but uh it's come to light uh, some suspicions have fallen that she may be like a princess in exile or something of that sort. Um so we still haven't seen her on screen but yeah, someone is is uh, pointed the uh, the Agaran Huntress uh, Thuja your way. Uh, there was a bit of a scrap. Uh, originally, uh, you were planning on going to um, to Quinn's homeworld to uh, to seek asylum and find some more information about the scepter and maybe you know regather your wits. But it didn't really go that way. And uh, and Thuja jumped you to um, uh, to her homeworld, the the destroyed ruins of uh, of Agara. Uh, after a bit more scuffling and some smooching, you uh, leapt away uh, using the penetration drive, which is now spent, uh, leaving you uh, adrift in the erogenous zone. Um, I believe the ship is currently cloaked in a harbor in um, uh, the uh, Pleasure Planet. Yeah, the Pleasure yeah. Planet of Margaritaville. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, the, the coolest little planet in the erogenous zone. So... Yeah, there was some stuff, um, including murder, uh, that happened there. And um, Eugene, uh, you you were reintroduced to an old friend of yours, uh, owner of the uh, was it the, the SS Glorn, and now the SS Glorn Two. Yes. Yes. Whose whose ship you stole to escape this uh, this pleasure planet um, many many moons ago, uh, and you've you've returned and are are set about conning him once again, and I believe. When we last left uh, our heroes, uh, you were at a party mm. uh, that that Glorn, um, under the uh, under the belief that you would introduce him to and, and give him access to your friends uh, Rex and uh, and Quinn, uh, that he would uh, he would help you out with your problems. Um, but instead, you've seduced his wife. Um, so. <laughs> That's good. That's a good plan. Um, and uh, Quinn is passed out in a fern. <laughs> Uh, in the entranceway of the of the the palatial estate, uh, Rex. I think that just opened up though because of what I was yeah. doing and what was going on that I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's that's I think the last that's the last thing that we saw was was curious Aurora uh, sneaking into uh, sneaking into the basement and discovering a secret underground lizard man fight club. Um, there's some kind of yeah some kind of thing. There are two two male lizard men. Uh, in chains who are being, uh, you know, uh, engaged in, in battle. Um, and as, as the sexy sounds of La Bamba uh, fade into the background, um, <laughs> I think what ends up, what ends up happening with like our introduction scene is a, uh, a cut back and forth, a series of sort of quick vignette cuts between 
we we fade in on a on a, a shady moonlit like art studio and there's like a, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a, a a painting that seems composed equally of of a hot pink pigment and some kind of translucent greenish slime it's hard to tell what it is but looking at it makes you uncomfortable like a georgia o'keefe painting and you're kind of like am i what is oh dear this is making me feel things so we see this in the in the background lit by the the moons of margaritaville um and uh we hear the the high-pitched uh moans of pleasure from the wife of glorn uh her, her name is nina uh if if you've forgotten she's a tiny pink marsupial uh, we don't see her. The two of you are off screen, off camera, yeah, hoidily. But we can hear a, a gentle sloshing of of slime creature and these ex <laughs> these excited sounds of a of a little wombat lady. And it's mixed in between between there's that and there's also the like roaring and screeching. And we cut back to the the visceral scene of you know a shadowy ring of of onlookers clutching drinks and shouting uh, around a well lit uh, a well lit uh, combat arena, uh, an open area splashed with blood, scratched by the talons of imprisoned lizard men, and these two huge burly lizard folk um, who they crash into each other, uh, slashing with claws and and roaring in anger and pain. Uh, and uh, we we begin, I think, where we left off. Uh, Quinn, uh, aroused from your drunken slumber by the sounds of your uh, your people uh, in in pain and rage, uh, and we see your your lizard eyes snap open, Tyrannosaurus like, nestled behind the jungle like fronds of this ornamental fern that you've passed out behind. <laughs> Just a void fern. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's I think that's the shot, right? See these like this like scaly his scaly face and like the big jungle plants around him and his eye snaps open and it slowly pans out and he's laying on the floor. <laughs> like, Absolutely. 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 Like a, a cocktail waiter like gently walks over him and keeps walking. <laughs> Yeah, someone steps over him. But yeah, so so Quinn, you your eyes snap open and you can hear, you know, underneath the sounds of the party. And I think you can also probably hear the other set of noises uh, from the the upper. It all left. sounds the same to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so so what you, what do you do? <laughs> so um, down in the fighting pit, uh, the many people watching the the battle go on. Uh, someone is holding a drink, and the drink starts to like ripple a little bit, like, <laughs> <laughs> and they don't notice. <laughs> it just starts to ripple more, and then the big door behind them uh, bursts open, revealing a giant, furious, angry lizard man who is not pleased. <laughs> and. So when you when you burst in the doors the doors slam open uh you're you're in the crowd right aurora um yeah i'm still in, still at the front yeah. yeah so you you hear you hear the door slam open you can turn and even through the crowd you can see you can see quinn um and yeah quinn we we see you the door open you're you're lit from lit from behind in this this shadowy area around the ring uh quinn lunges at the entirety of the crowd just, just like attack everybody everyone attacking everyone no one is safe furious wrath can i use one of my thingies uh how do you do how do you i forgot how do we wait does this game work again what okay what what thingy do you want to do i want to uh say that there's this very wealthy pompous looking man with two beautiful women on his arms and he's sitting in a corner and in front of him is this beautiful jar that ha is like just like it looks like it's made of like diamonds or something like it's just beautiful and shiny and it glistens in the light and i want to say that he specifically goes in that corner and attacks that man for the jar like ah uh, okay so you you would like to compel quinn's oh, rage yeah. in a particular direction uh, yeah. Towards this this wealthy man drinking out of a a, a beautiful mason jar. Well, the, like, no, the, the like twas Oregon of the future. He's he's the man's distract. Well, I mean, the man's probably looking at him now, but has the the women still around his his arms or whatever, his arms around them. Yes, wow. or them around him, which whichever. Whatever, whichever. It's just tentacles. It's complicated. <laughs> um, he's he. All right. So there's there's a, a wealthy a wealthy friend of. I mean, this is up to you, Quinn. Will you will you accept the compel? Uh, can I? Storify this compel in my own Quinn-like way, if I take you, it. 
You can offer, yeah, yeah. You can offer a thing. All, all this is is suggesting that there may be something to draw your ire. Uh, Definitely, in I'm direct. in. One hundred percent. Let's do. Yeah, it. you can choose how you react to it. Okay. Sure. Right, sure. Great. So, so Aurora, you. Here we go. You give one to to Quinn. So Quinn lunges at the crowd and starts like throwing people, and he's <laughs> furious with rage and starts in on his like. I am Quinn to let right, the whole thing. And as, <laughs> and as he's doing it, halfway through, he turns and just stops and looks over and sees this jar. And it's this immaculate, beautiful jar. And he, like, his arms drop and he just walks over to it as there's, like, people screaming and running around, like, ah! And there's, like, people all cut up and he just picks up the jar and gives it a look and then flips the table onto the, the three people that are there and then puts the jar in his pants and resumes butchering everyone. <laughs> okay, well let's let's have you let's have you roll because I think I think the complication here is that this guy particularly is a he's a bit of a baller. Uh, he probably has security or someone looking after him. He's a guest of the of the estate, right? He's obviously not the he's not the guy in charge. I don't, I don't um, think you understand. I kill all of them. Well, and that's and that's the thing. Let's see if you all of them you, die. Let's see if I don't you know why overcome. you haven't thrown anyone in the pit for your brethren to kill. Oh, no, I'm going to get there. There's a lot of people here. Be doing there's, a, there's a lot of people here. I'm going to get there. There's a I lot of people here. This. I want to do something, though. That's why I want him to go over there. Yeah, so, okay. So let's have um, you, Quinn, let's let's see if you can if you can overcome forcefully the uh, the the security in the crowd. So I think that as as the chaos erupts, uh, this this rich man and his and his uh, concubines um, like he, he looks like frightened and startled, but his security team is more like on the ball. So they they try to close ranks around him. And you you come forward, claws flashing in the dark. Um, let's have you let's have you roll to overcome with uh, with forceful. Um, and I think to clear a path to him, we'll say it's difficulty three. Sure. I also have a plus two when forcefully attacking when outnumbered. So that's this entire scene. Thanks, yeah, so game. I I mean, they're not—they're not fighting back yet. You're not—you're not, you're not attacking. You're—you're you're just they're overcoming them. They are—they are meat obstacles. If you fail this, then yeah, maybe you'll have to attack. But this is—this is an overcome. This is just a like, hurling them aside. I see your game. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. Mm -hmm. All right. So you will need to—you will need to spend a fate point. You'll need to spend that point you were given if you would like to succeed. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna take this jar collector. Nothing's getting in my way of this jar. Perfect. All right. So your your lust for the jar is is stronger than their ability to protect their boss. And yeah, you don't, I don't think maybe you even notice that they're security guards. You just kind of carve through them uh, like like everyone else. And yeah, there's just like limbs lying about, blood, people, like and blood of many colors because this is a this is a multicultural fight club. Um, right, right. There are alien bodies lying all about as you clear your path to this to the jar, grab the table and, and flip it. And so Aurora, while this is occurring, there's panic and screaming. Everybody's freaking out. Um, your uh, your your little robo pup is like barking and, and pulling at you like to get out of there. What are you what are you going to do? I, I want I mean, I see Quinn obviously come in and start doing his thing. I feel like safe around him, but the crowd is in chaos and and obviously the two lizard men fighting. I don't know if they're still fighting. Yeah, so you you cast a glance over these lizard men and and to you, you can barely tell them apart. One is slightly greener and one is slightly more orange. Um, they're huge. They're big, big lizard men. Um, they have obvious signs of, uh, of like battle scarring. They have like claw marks dug into their armor, uh, or into their armored plates. Um, they're wearing loincloths, uh, and, uh, they seem to be fighting in a sort of a frenzy. They don't even notice that the, the situation has changed. They're just tearing at each other. Their chains like rattling, uh, loose. And do they have like, uh, is there, how are they restrained beyond chains? Is there like any sort of electronic collars or anything? Um, no, uh, not that, not that you can see. And that's no. keeping them in. Is that like electronically controlled or is it all just old fashioned? No, they're, they're chained to, there's a, there's a, a moat sort of around the pit itself. Okay. That's about, you know, a meter, two meters wide. Uh, and then just descends into darkness. They're on a bit of a pillar inside of a, a, a like moated area. And then, um, yeah, the the little ring that they're fighting in is sort of like four meters across, and they're chained to uh, to the center of it. So their their chains both extend to a pillar in the middle, so they can't jump off of the platform. Um, it doesn't restrain them from fighting each other. Okay, then I want to see if I can sedate them. Okay, in in what way? 
um, or or like free them or sedate them. But I don't know how I'd sedate them or free them if it's just like I'd probably have to like shoot their chains or something. Yes. Yeah. If you if you lasered their chains from here, you could you could set them free. Sure. Okay, well then I guess I'm going to get Sparky and get him to target the chains in the center and try to free them while, okay. while I am making my way to the door because I don't want to be near that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Okay, um, let's have you roll to uh, roll to overcome. Um, I think you're being, you're being clever. Um, and they're moving around, so getting a clear shot might be a little difficult. Let's say, same difficulty, let's say difficulty three. So you're rolling to overcome. Okay. There you go. Okay, sure. Yay. So yeah, Sparky Sparky goes into uh, surgical laser mode because he has one of those, of course, and uh, yeah, fires a thin red beam uh, out, uh, and it hits the it hits the post, and the little like collar area where the chains are linked to the pillar uh, starts to uh, starts to melt, and you can see the chain starting to bend uh, as the lizardmen strain and, and struggle against it. Um, they're not really trying to free themselves, but once it snaps, they'll 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 get free. Um, so that'll happen momentarily. Um, now you're trying to, or you're trying to make your way to the door while Quinn is causing oh, all kinds of trouble. Anywhere. I don't want to be. It's not Quinn. I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of these two. Once I free them, I'm afraid that they might think I'm just one of the people there to see them fight. And so I'm either like I have to do something to get out of there. Um, so I think I'm gonna try and go back and find Rex at this point. Okay. And, all right. And tell what's going on. Let's have you. Uh, I'll have you roll again. Roll. Uh, are you trying to? You're trying to like sneak out with the crowd or? No, I'm trying to be quick about it because I know okay. that if they, if they right. realize they're going to be after us, so. Okay, sure. So roll, uh, roll quickly. Um, difficulty two to get out of the out of the room. Oh yeah, no problem. You are you are quick as hell. So you yeah you slip out and back into the stairs. I think like uh, Sparky just bulldozes people down, and I just run after him. So as we go back up. Sure. Okay. Um, so meanwhile, uh, upstairs, uh, back in the the moonlit studio. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, I think that we see um, we, we get a, a pan shot from the open window and the the the, the glittering moons uh, up above and this nice slow like r romantic kind of pan down across the studio and see the paints and like a half finished sculpture and uh, and then we see um, you know those like Jello molds that people make with like fruit floating in them <laughs> you know those you yeah, ever see yeah. one of them yeah mm -hmm. basically I sure it, have because that's yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in 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 this moment of uh, of of post whatever it was you were doing, um, yeah, we see this this sort of quivering, cu vaguely cube shape with a little pink marsupial kind of floating lazily in in half in it, um, and uh, and she um, she's smoking a cigarette and she's kind of like half like stuck in you, um, when the door bangs open. Um, and standing in the door, uh, we see flanked by uh, two uh, large, angry-looking uh, guards. Uh, we see your friend uh, Glorn, and he's not happy. He's wearing his little tuxedo because it's you know he's at a fancy party, and he uh, yeah you see a, a look of betrayal and rage pass over his pink furred face. Um, do you, do you say anything in your defense with his wife floating half in your body? Uh, I, go, I go to say something, but it comes out as, oh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, oh. <laughs> and then I stop, and then you just see all of these tiny little bits of me go, Wee! and like kind of roll away, <laughs> but, like all of the pieces that were on the art and, and just all over the room, they all sort of like just evacuate they escape all like making different noises and it's nonsense so i sure i make an attempt boy do i but right. so so you <laughs> nothing yeah, that makes you, sense comes out <laughs> you panic and try to try to flee in all directions at once all of all of the bits of me that that yeah. aren't me anymore they all like they're their own thing at this point so they all like try to <laughs> run core, away yeah the core eugene consciousness is still present but yeah. Uh, un unable to respond with any mm -hmm. any. Okay. All right. So Glorn, uh, yeah, Glorn stares into the room. We just we see him in silhouette, right? And he, he says, um, "He's like, I expected this from you, Eugene, but Nina, how dare you? And with a slime, 
And he, he shakes his head. And, I uh, try to look offended, but it's impossible because of the mold that I'm in right now. <laughs> he's like, a slime. Oh, how am I going to explain this to the hatchlings? And, uh, and she takes a long drag on her cigarette and she says, this slime satisfied me in a way you never have, Glorn. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like you could you could see his little he does the little like was it the Arthur the little meme where he sees his little fist <laughs> <laughs> his little marsupial fist <laughs> the whole time that they're having this like really heated you know pointed angry conversation you just hear me like oh uh, uh, yeah uh, <laughs> kind of trying but it it fades into background noise real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he uh, he says um, he's not really sure where to look because there's like bits of you kind of all over the place and on his wife and stuff. And and so he um, he, he kind of like tries to figure out where to look. And then he uh, and he says, Nina, I'm going to deal with you later. You two scoop up what you can of Eugene. And he like scowls. And the, the two of them, um, one of them uh, pulls out a garbage bag. Um, and uh, yeah, and the and the other uh, comes forward. And there, he's wearing like uh, dishwashing, like yellow rubber gloves. Uh, and he's gonna come forward. And they're gonna try to get scoop as much of you as they can into this garbage bag, uh, right. unless you unless you escape or do something. What do you want to do? Um, fuck. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm literally, I'm literally. There's like half of me left in a mold with. <laughs> a tiny pink marsupial halfway inside of my body. And then the rest of me is just little bits that are stupid that are all just trying to escape. Running around. Yeah. They're all just like rolling in different directions, making, you know, <laughs> noises. <laughs> yep. Um, I guess, I guess while they start to like try and grab the ones that are escaping, I slowly try to just like slip the rest of my body out of the mold, like in the direction away from them, so maybe they won't notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you are you are like enough of you could potentially potentially escape. Um, roll um, roll your uh, your sneaky, uh, I guess. Um, we'll say okay. to get. I think. I mean, I think you've got a pretty advantageous position here if you just want to get away. Um, let's let's say three difficulty three. With your, okay. Oh dear, Eugene! No, oh boy. Uh, okay, so would you like to spend one of your fate points to maybe fix that horrible roll? Uh, I mean, I am a disgusting coward. So you so certainly. I would get two, only two from that, though, right? Or you can, or you can re-roll, and you rolled two minuses and two zeros, so. I'll re-roll. Re I'll re-roll. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, a two. That's much better. That's better. Yep. But. Do you have another? Do you have another fate? Uh, another aspect you can invoke? I mean, well, in choosing to use one of my fate points to re-roll, was that utilizing an aspect? Yeah, that was using. That was invoking your your coward aspect. Um, okay. You can you can invoke another one of your aspects if you want to. Uh, can I can I invoke? We are all connected. And I just like I have confidence that I can pull this off because the other bits of me are so obnoxious right now. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the idea here too is like this would be the the comic scene of like these two guys, uh, you know, in their in their kind of like um you know space equivalent of of like secret service suits with their like black glasses and their earpiece running around trying to scoop up tiny blobs into a garbage bag as yeah. you're like pulling on their clothes and running around and like yeah no totally. Okay, great. Then I'll I'll do that. Okay. All right. So you, you get a plus two, you escape. Um, and, uh, if you want to, you can, you can have left behind, uh, you know, one or two little, little bits. Um, but for the most part, you can seep into the cracks in the floor, into the vents, you, you escape. Um, and, uh, yeah. How many, do you want to leave behind a, a piece of yourself? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah. leave, I'll, I'll leave behind, uh, two because there were two bodyguards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they managed to get two of you, but the rest all kind of slip away. All right, yeah. roll, 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 a d, roll a d26 twice, I guess. 25. Okay, so why? I can't use whys. Okay. Hold on, let me write this down. Can't use whys. <laughs> Shit, I can't use... 
A, B, C, D, F. E, F. I can't use F. Okay. All right. So shit. Yeah. So I think the last the last thing that we see is you sort of seep away into the uh, into the the floorboards. Um, we see uh, uh, yeah one of the one of the guys like grab one of the little slimes and and stuff in the bag and he's like why and then gets jammed <laughs> in the bag. Um, and uh, yeah, and then Nina and uh, Nina and, and Glorn start to like argue in in um, Felician. Uh, it's a little like sort of high pitched squeaking sounds they start making at each other. It'd be really cute if you didn't know that they were having like a domestic dispute. Right. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, d- downstairs in the main on the main floor, um, Rex, uh, you see where are you when when the chaos uh, breaks out with people like start coming upstairs covered in blood. Uh, Rex was heading upstairs in the building in general, mm-hmm. but uh, immediately, like, clear cut through the noise and the aftershave and the perfume, he gets this strong scent of blood. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And he just turns like a bloodhound, and he's just, like, straight towards the basement. And as he gets to the door, he sees people, like, running and screaming and pushing past him, but they're actually running into a dance floor that's loud and bumping. And mm-hmm. so a lot of people aren't actually noticing. Yeah, it's uh, like the, the beginning commotion. of Blade. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Everyone's having a great time. All I want is people to be running and screaming towards the door, and it's just you with your mouth open. They just keep running. <laughs> just running <laughs> in. Just, just grabbing a snack on the way down. No, but what I do, what I do think happens, because people are covered in blood, right, and they keep pushing you and touching you, is that you start clean as you're at the top of the stairs and you come out of the bottom just smeared with blood yeah um and i i would love i would love to compel you uh right now uh rex um and yeah your your looks like a shark feels like a shark it's probably a shark i would love to compel you into a, a blood frenzy uh and and whatever it was you intended to do down here presented with so much food and so much blood everywhere all you want to do is just eat people and cause chaos would you, would you like to take that compel? Uh, <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> come on, join me. Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think uh, Rex pushes his way to the bottom of the stairs and he's already struggling. And then he looks over and he sees Quinn just in a giant brawl. Mm-hmm. And like he just it just snaps in him that like is going down. Yeah, and I, I think I think what we see at the bottom of the stairs, the first thing you see is there's a um there's a it looks like it looks like a, a kind of like um like a beige sort of like manatee looking thing that's been like squeezed into a like a business suit. Um and he, he looks up at you and like holds his hand up and he's like missing a, a hand, like a little flipper, and he's just like, Ah, help me, help and he like looks at you all like helplessly. Rex, uh, Rex just looks at him and his like his like pupils dilate, and then he just like rips his mask off and just like bites into the guy's neck. <laughs> yeah, blood sprays. Everything. Yeah, it just sprays Squeaks. everywhere. There's like another guest running past and they get showered and they scream. Awesome. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, so Rex makes a, a bad situation worse. Um, <sighs> Um, I think that as you as you come up the stairs, the two of you kind of like pass in the crowd and like you turn and you see Rex going downstairs, but you get kind of like pulled away. Um, you can turn around and follow him down or you can keep going. You can keep going upstairs if you want to. I think I sort of I just like it's kind of like, you know, uh, I just get pulled to the top because that's just the way the crowd's going and I'm not as big as Rex. Uh, so I, I can't control it. So then whenever I get to the top, I sort of like wait. And I lean against the wall as everyone's screaming and running by. I'm just like shaking my head. And I don't know what to do. Yeah, I, think and, you get, uh, I think you get you get grabbed as you as you come up uh, as you come upstairs. So you you come upstairs and someone we see a like a black uh, glove like hand grab you and slam you up against the wall. And when the camera snaps to whoever's got you, um, we see uh, Thuja. Um, she looks pissed. I mean, she always looks pissed, but um, she has she has rest, resting <laughs> now berserker she's pissed face. with purpose. And now she's just actually, and she grabs you and she slams you against the wall and she's like, where's Rex? And and I'm still like kind of catching my breath. I'm like, well, why? Why why do you need him? Um, um, listen, you should just get out of here. She slaps, she slaps you in the face. Just like slaps you hard across the face. She's like, yeah, I asked you a question. And like Sparky immediately like latches onto her, her pants and starts tugging. 
Totally. Yeah, yeah. But it's less it's less like a bulldog Sparky and, and more like copper tone ad to Sparky. And she like yeah. looks at him oddly. Um, as you as this happens, you see like uh a, a like a a woman in like a cocktail dress, uh, and she's got like weird donkey ears, <laughs> and she comes like clawing past screaming, Shut! Out the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm like, I mean, you can go down there if you want, but there's three angry dinosaurs and a shark. Uh, just, just face goes from, I'm going to commit violence against you to, I'm kind of turned on, I gotta go. And she like pushes you aside. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and heads towards the heads towards the stairs. <laughs> I'm afraid to go down there. But I'm yeah, gonna go down there. Probably, probably for the best. Um, so I just downstairs, the wall slowly going down the the thing as everyone just brushes past me and I get blood on me and I'm just I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, so you start to like. You, I think you're headed for the stairs. I've got something for you before that happens. But you're headed for the stairs. Thuja bolts for it, and you can see her just like punching people and pushing them out of the way. Um, and downstairs, Quinn, uh, you, yeah, you, you've you've thrown aside this these security people, uh, and you've grabbed the you've grabbed the um. Uh, the 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 chalice uh, that he was using this like goblet thing, um, and then you hear you hear the snapping uh, of chains and the uh, the angry roar of of these lizard men, and you you turn and look, and I think in your peripheral vision you can see you know Rex jamming someone's leg into his mouth, um, and on the on the the platform uh, the the lizard men have snapped free. They have these long kind of melted chains hanging from their neck, and yeah they um. They're lost in this this berserker frenzy, um, and uh, what do you? Yeah, what do you do? Uh, the rich guy with the two ladies, I yes. grab him and chuck him in the pit to those okay. guys. Let him know what's he, up. It's time to he, party, boys. He, yeah, he will back he, on he the will menu. Helms, he will helms into the pit. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, they don't. They don't. They're, they're like focused on each other they're focused on like trying to like kill each other and they don't think they i don't think they realize that they've been freed um there's something there's something going on with these these two these two lizard men my my question for you quinn i guess is do you take the time to try to figure it out or are you like lost in in combat oh frenzy? man they're my bros I, ha I i stop i stop what i'm doing and jump in the pit landing on the head of the guy i just threw in because <laughs> and smashing it and then i like sort of Chris Pratt, the two of them, and I'm like, brothers, what? What's wrong with you? Yeah, but okay. I'm like, Chris Pratt and them. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at this distance, you can see, um, you can tell by the like patterning of their scales and like their their like fringes and coloring and stuff. You can kind of get a general idea, uh, like how to address them. You don't know their names, but you could tell like what part of the of the planet they're from, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, can you make a? Let's have you make a roll. Let's have you make an overcome with uh, careful to figure out what the deal is with these two and why they're so like about killing each other. Yeah. All right. So in this in this moment, you you have a second. They they turn to look at you, um, and you can see uh, in their eyes. And I think more. This is a hard thing for for folk who are not lizard men to understand. But a lot of lizard man communication is we've talked about this before through pheromones. It's the 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 scent of uh, of their of their like glands that communicates a lot of this information. Something about these two um, immediately like sets your your hearts pounding. Um, they they have they have had the they have had possibly the worst thing that can happen to a a, a male lizard man of your people uh, happen to them. Um, there there is there is among them among your your people men have you're you're born with uh, you're given a, a jar at birth that is like the sacred jar right it's the it's the jar containing all feelings, and they have had theirs destroyed and so no! all their all of the feelings they've jammed down into their into their man place have escaped and they're just lost in like a frenzy of emotion. Um, and, uh, yeah, and they can't, uh, they, they can't like, they, they can't get clear. They, they've lost themselves in this primordial rage. Um, and yeah, when they turn to see you, uh, you, you have this moment where you hold them at bay, but, uh, they, yeah, you can see the, the, the rage and the fear and the sadness and all of their emotions like welling back up to the surface. What do you do? 
Quinn knowing this and sensing this tragedy that has befallen them also knows that the greatest gift you can give to another lizard man is a jar of your own. <laughs> right. And because he has not only the jar he took from the guy upstairs, but also his new prized strawberry shortcake jar. He pulls it out of his pants and he he takes the one jar and hands it to one guy and he opens Wait, up strawberry shortcake. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna he opens say up one strawberry of those shortcake has the cigarette in it, so and and dumps the cigarette down his pants again, and then closes it back <laughs> up, and hands strawberry shortcake to the other guy, and he's like, "You may take these. Let they be your new jars." Yeah, there is there's a there is a sacred ritual among the the men of your people where one one man may bear the emotional burden temporarily for others so they might recenter themselves around a jar when when their their jar becomes lost or as a as a sacred means of bonding um and i think what you have to do to make this work is you have to personally like normally you do this one on one right but quinn is all about getting outnumbered uh, you have to like personally wrestle the two of them to the ground and hold their feelings at bay so that they might be able to uh, to contain them in these jars so you that's, hold the that's jars that's exactly what i do yeah you hold the jars out and they they you know they you can you see their like vents on the side of their necks spray pheromones into the air and you can feel the the heady aroma of their rage trying to overwhelm you and drag you down into their into their fury uh and then you have to yeah they, they leap at you uh hissing and, and shrieking and now the the three of you kind of like tumble around on the floor claws slashing mm-hmm Cool. All right. Uh, so let's maybe take a break here and we'll find out how this sacred <laughs> ritual goes. When Flawlessly, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure yeah, it all yeah. goes just right. What could yeah. go no problems? Yeah. So we'll see if you can contain their, their overwhelming feelings in your strawberry shortcake jar uh, when, we, uh, when we get back. Uh, stick around, everybody. This, more of this when we come back. 